Hello everyone, welcome to this demo on how to combine images using selections and mask. Um, we have practiced already on our previous demos how to do selections and things like that, but now we're going to put all this knowledge together to start combining images. So I'm going to go over some of the things that we've done before, like the pen tool, but now it's going to be used in terms of doing a selection for combining images. Right now I have this image of a computer right here, computer screen. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the area of the screen that's blue so I can make a mask. And then behind this image, I'm going to put another image so it can look like it's on the screen. Okay. So I'm going to walk you through the steps. So make sure that you take some notes. Some of the, if it, some of the new stuff um, will be very useful, but some of the stuff we have covered and it's just a review, but take notes anyway so it can help you out when you're doing your own combination of images. So the first thing I'm gonna do is go to my layers, okay? And I'm gonna go right here where my layers are and I'm gonna duplicate the background, okay? So that's the first step I'm gonna do. And I'm gonna explain later on why I'm doing it beforehand. So I'm gonna press Command J. That's the shortcut to duplicate your layer. Your layer. You can also drag it to the icon here that has a plus next to the trash can that will also duplicate your layer but I get in the habit of doing shortcuts so I'm just going to tell you guys the shortcuts and you can decide later if you want to do the shortcut or drag the layer all the way down here okay so now that we have the layer that we're going to be working with okay I'm going to basically select the tool that I'm going to be using which is the pen tool so I'm going to select P on my keyboard and I get this fountain pen icon. You can find it right here on the toolbar. Okay, it's all the way at the bottom. Uh, make sure, you know, if you don't see it and you press the letter P, okay, make sure that it's the first option of this tool. Okay, so the pen tool. Okay, now that we have the pen tool, the second step is make sure that you have the path panel open and it's right behind the layers panel is all the way over here. I'm gonna pull it out so you can see what I'm gonna be working with. And you're gonna to go to this menu and you're gonna click where it says new path. So as soon as you click the new path, it's gonna make you know a layer after you rename it. So I'm gonna put this one um, screen and I'll press okay. And you're gonna see that it looks like a layer, okay? But it's not the layers, the layers are all the way over here, okay? Those are the layers that have the images and the adjustments. This right here is just a path. So now we have our path workspace right here that we're going to be doing and oh i realized that i added a new anchor point by accident okay so now what we're going to do is we're going to be using the pen tool to make the selection and one of the things that you have to be really aware is you want to zoom in to your image when you're doing a selection you don't want to be like selecting it from far away like this by the way i press command zero to fit the image to the screen in case you forgot if I want to zoom in, I just press Command Plus, okay, and it goes into the screen. And once I'm in the screen, if I hit Spacebar, you can see that my icon of the pen tool changes to a hand. So I can basically click and drag, okay, and move across the image. So here's where I'm going to start. I'm going to start right in the corner. And the one thing that you have to understand how the pen works, the pen tool works, or any selection for that matter, is you want to always do it a little bit inside of whatever you're selecting. Okay, so if I'm selecting this window right here, if I click right where the black is in between the monitor, okay, edge and the screen, then you're going to end up with a black line around it. And we don't actually want that. Okay, so I want to go a little bit in. And with the pen tool, I just click. Okay, now the cool thing with the pen tool, once you add a dot, you can move it with your keyboard. So if it's not in the right position, don't panic. You can just go ahead and move it to where you think it works the best, okay? So I'm gonna put it right there. And now I'm gonna hit space bar so I can pull up my image. The good thing here is that this is just a straight line. So I don't have to do a lot of dots to get here. I can just do one and then I can reposition it. Let's see if I'm gonna do a little bit higher. There we go. You see that I'm a little bit in that gray, just a little bit. So that way I don't end up with a halo around it. And I'm going to do another one here. Okay. Let's do a little bit more to the left. And I'm going to move across, down, and click another one here. Oop, that one's a little bit too in. Okay, so that looks good. Now I'm going to go to the first one. Okay, so the, the when you're doing the path, 
okay, with the pen tool. The first one, when you hover over it, you can see that the tool changes to like a little circle on the bottom right, okay? So that's telling you if you click there, it will close your path. So that's what I want. I'm gonna go ahead and close my path. So now if I zoom out, you will realize that you have your entire monitor selected with four simple clicks, okay? So now that I have my monitor selected, the next step is to change that path that we did or work path into a selection. Right now it's not a selection. We don't see any walking ants. So we need to make sure that we change that to a selection. So we're gonna go here to this panel where it says path. And I'm gonna go right here to this little menu. I'm gonna click it. And then right here it's gonna say make selection. So I'm gonna go ahead and click that, okay? So the menu again, and then when this window comes up, make selection. Now there's gonna be a window that comes up that's gonna ask you how much feather you want, so feather radius. What that means is how soft the edges are gonna be, okay? So that's very key because if you don't have any feather and you just leave it on zero, it's gonna be like a cutout from a magazine and you don't want that, it won't look realistic. If you actually zoom into any part of the image, you will see that all the edges are a little bit soft and that's what we want. You wanna make sure that there is some softness. So I'm gonna put one for this one. Usually I go between 0.5 to two, depending on the image. The smaller the file size, the less feather radius you want. The bigger the file size, the more pixels you might need to make it look realistic. And it's gonna depend on the image, right? You have to look at the image and decide how soft you want it. So you can always go back and rechange it later. I'm gonna show you how to do that. So you can press okay. So right now I have my selection already with the feather, how soft I want it. So I'm gonna go here to this layer one, okay? The reason why I make you copy this is because we're gonna add a mask to this layer. If I had the background selected, I wouldn't be able to do the mask because it was locked. Okay, so that's why I want it above it. So to do the mask, you're gonna click on this little icon right here, okay? Let me highlight it. So it's this one right here, it looks like a Japanese flag. So if you click there, you will see that it adds a mask right to your layer, okay? Now, if I hide this one, you will see that the mask is opposite of what you want. Right now it's hiding everything, but just keeping the monitor, and you want the opposite of it. There's two ways of fixing it. You can do Command-I, and it will invert it, or you can double click, and then here there is an option to invert. Okay, I usually don't like doing it this way because I, I like memorizing shortcuts. It's a lot faster and you know, you just do command I and that's it, it's inverted. And then you have a hole right there, okay? So now we have that grid that we know that it means that that's the background of your canvas. So it's empty, okay? Now we're gonna go to this image right here that I have open, that is a beach image, okay? That's where we all should be right now at the beach. And I'm gonna bring that image to the monitor. So I'm gonna click here, drag it up. I'm not letting it go, bringing it down and then letting it go. Okay, so by default, because I just did that, it threw the layer on top of everything. So right now it's not behind and that's what I want. Okay, so right now it's covering my monitor and I want the opposite. I want this image to be behind this monitor so I can see it inside that window. So the only thing I have to do is I have to drag that layer underneath. And now that image is inside my monitor and I can reposition it however I want. One thing that you have to do is you have to press Command T so you can have the image active and then you go to the corners and then you drag it down so that way you can make it fit better on that screen because right now it's not quite, you know, fitting inside, it's cropping a lot of it. Now, one thing is gonna happen, this image is a rectangle and this monitor is more like a square almost. So you will have to crop part of that image anyway. So you can decide you know, how you want your composition. I'm gonna put a little bit off to the side and I have to make sure it's a little bit higher. There you go. You can also, once you do this, you can also move it with your arrow keys if you wanna do very subtle changes um, to adjust your image behind it. Once you have it where you want, remember, every time you see this blue lines around your image, it means that you're transforming your image, okay? So you have to approve that. So to do that, you can hit this check mark on the top, or you can press the return key in your keyboard, and it will do the same thing, and then boom, it's done, 
Okay, so that's one thing that you have to do to basically, you know, fit the two images. Something else that you can do is, you know, you can zoom in and see if the edge of the monitor looks fine. It actually looks pretty good. It, it looks a little bit soft. That's what I meant with the feather. So it looks like it's working. So right now that's looking pretty good. Um, the other thing that you might have to do is see if the two images basically fit well together in terms of lightness right and color and all that so you can basically zoom out and you can select your image of the beach and you can add a curve above it and you can try to see if it needs to be brighter or needs to be darker to make to make sure it fits the scene a little bit better so it looks like it's from a monitor um, so that's something that you can do also to make it fit better um, this is a simple lab it's just a matter to introduce what you have learned by combining images it's a starting point so make sure that you understand how to do all the steps and if you have any questions please let me know thank you very much